a new take on Mariella in the Desert, John Hutton on playing Iago, Mama Hated guitar solos, and a look ahead to next season's shows. It's April 6th, 2010. I'm Charlie Miller, and this is 10 Minutes to Curtain. Hey everyone, it's been a busy month at the Denver Center with the last three shows of the season opening, and we're now heading into the final stretch. There's a lot to talk about, so let's get started. Playing here in the Ricketson Theater is Mariella in the Desert by Karen Zacharias. The play originally premiered in 2005 in Chicago and has been produced across the country a number of times since then. Even though the play has been performed before, playwright Karen Zacharias seized the opportunity to revisit the script, this time with director Bruce Seavey here in Denver. Here's a look at the process of re-premiering a play. Mariela in the Desert is a story um, set in Mexico in the 1950s about a family. And the backstory is that these two artists, um, a married couple, uh, leave Mexico City, go north into the desert, buy a ranch, build a, build a house, and try to establish a commune for artists. When the play starts, well, it's now 20 years later, the couple is still living in the desert. Their daughter is an uh, emerging and successful artist in Mexico City, and she's been summoned to the um, deathbed of her father. It's, it's a play about human relationships and how we, we hurt and heal and go on um, with life. Well, I've been aware of this play for about five or six years. Um, I've been interested in the play for a while. There's been four productions of this play, and these were all great opportunities to move the script along. We chose it, put it on the season, and I talked to Karen and said, hey, we're going to do your play. And she said, well, gosh, I've been wanting, I've been waiting for an opportunity to work on it again. There comes a point where you say, well, I think I've been with this story long enough, and I'm ready to let go and write other stories. I wasn't ready to let go of this story. Karen has done significant uh, rewrites on the play. Uh, the story, the basic story is still the same, but the script has evolved uh, in a huge and wonderful way. Because it's a living art, because every actor and every director and every set breathes new life in it, you're always discovering something new. So it's just been great. It, it actually feels just like working on a new play, and in fact, it is. It's a new play with a name we've heard of before that got a production about six years ago at the Goodman, but I feel like I'm calling it a re-premiere. That's my tech terminology for it. I do feel that this is the final word on Mariela in the Desert, that people who will come and see this version of the play will see the play that will live on in this state, because I think it says everything I hoped and wanted it to say, and I hope you find that too. Playing in the Space Theater is William Shakespeare's Othello, featuring resident company actor John Hutton as the villainous Iago. When I decided to do a story focusing on John, we asked the Denver Center's Facebook fans and Twitter followers to submit questions for the interview. So I caught up with John before a show, and here he is answering your questions in a segment I like to call Inside the Actor's Dressing Room. Why don't you start by telling us about your character? Who is Iago? Iago is um, Othello's right-hand man, really. Uh, he's uh, the quintessential villain, for want of a better word. Um, he's in an amazing psychological study. He doesn't look at the world the way most people look at the world. He doesn't have a conscience. He's one of the most fascinating characters in the Shakespeare canon. Angela on Facebook wanted to know, how do you get in the mindset to play one of Shakespeare's most sinister villains? I just sort of do the, the fundamental stuff, like warm up my voice and my body. And, and then I put my, uh, myself into this uh, place of um, glee really is the best way to describe it. That's a great word, too. And um, so that from that place of glee, all this mayhem and mischief and hate and resentment and vituperation and revenge, so it comes from a positive place. Cassie on Twitter asked, what's the greatest challenge of performing a large Shakespearean role? A large Shakespeare role is an athletic event for the actor. Um, on top of all the other stuff that it is, that is a little hard to describe. But it's fundamentally that. You know, when you get done with Othello, you're completely physically spent. And emotionally, too, but just the breathing. <laughs> it's, it's phenomenal. 
Here's one from Hunter on Facebook who wondered, how do you make a character original when it has been performed a million times? Yeah, that's a good question. And the first thing you do is forget about that part. You know, you forget about that John Gielgud played it and Ian McKellen, that you're not going to... The, the goal, of course, is just to play the character, not to create some definitive portrayal. And, and of course, I will... My Iago is going to be different from anybody else's because I'm different from anybody else. And this production is different from any other production because it's a collection of individuals who have come together for the first time to do the play. That's really what it's about and you forget about the rest of it and just bring as much of what you know about life and the things, the themes that the play is about uh, to the guy and um, you know again it's really you, you cross your fingers and hope for the best. <laughs> Art is like that I think. To see the rest of John's answers to your questions check out this month's bonus features. In the stage theater is Mama Hated Diesels, the rockin' tribute to America's long-haul truckers. The show features a live band that includes lead guitarist David Keenan. Now, I heard that Keenan was causing some tension backstage, so I went behind the scenes to get the full story. David Keenan, yeah, he's such a great musician in the songs. It's built so that he's able to take a solo. And well, the trouble is, once he starts to solo, we, we just can't get him to stop. Take it, Dave. This has gotten out of control. It's pretty disruptive back here. I don't know how to deal with it anymore. Stop it. You know what? It was really cute at first, but now it's a problem. I don't think it's a problem. It's a character flaw. I'm sure of it. Mm. You consider it so long that the band is playing with him? Hmm. With this season winding down, we're already looking forward to next season. A couple of weeks ago, Artistic Director Kent Thompson announced the 2010-2011 season of plays for the Denver Center Theatre Company. And here's a taste of what he had to say. I think one of the things you'll see in the season next year if you come is these plays will really speak to you. They're current, they're relevant, they're new. We're doing two or three classics, Dracula, Midsummer Night's Dream, A Christmas Carol. But by and large, these are new plays or recent hits from American stages around the country. I think you'll find it a very exciting season that'll speak to you today about what's going on in the world. To watch the full video of Kent's announcement and to learn more about the plays, visit denvercenter.org. And don't miss next month's episode for a unique 10 minutes to curtain look at next season's lineup of plays. Well, our 10 minutes are almost up, but before I go, I wanted to mention two other plays at the Denver Center that are definitely worth your attention. The third year Master of Fine Arts students at the National Theater Conservatory are performing Hamlet and Tartuffe in repertory here at the Conservatory Theater across the street from the Performing Arts Complex. This is your last chance to see these talented actors before they go on to brilliant performing careers. So don't miss the rep. That's all for this month. Tune in the first Tuesday in May for the last episode of the season. In the meantime, I'll see you in the theater. <laughs>